And I feel like I need to edit that, but y'all know I don't be editing. I'm going to put that shit up there just how it is. And I'm not, I'm not doing no editing. I did that shit at one of my jobs. Editing is tedious. That's why I don't. Mm -mm. I'll be like, well, I ain't do that. I, when I was stopping to try to edit all the videos, I wasn't posting them. I just had a bunch of videos that I said I might post. And when I decided, like, hey, this page is called Simply, Simply Nikki J. Give them Simply You. Like, you do whatever the fuck you want. And that's what I do. So, um, I have been thinking about the. The way that I have been walking in this life, right? And from from childhood, just thinking about me and my bags, my stuff, um, traveling from one place to another. Never really getting too comfortable with myself or the people around me. Like, I love y'all, but I thought I, like, when I knew I was gonna be stable, I did that. Like, I found my tribe and I got comfortable. And I was like, okay, like, I'm finally protected and supported and loved. And so, like, I can try to thrive. And then it got frustrating, cause I'm like, why am I still only going so far? Like, why can't I get beyond this step? Like, no matter what. And it wasn't happening. And so, it was like, okay. All right. Well, it ain't time. You know, that's my, guess it ain't time. Um, and then I just was taking this life journey as I take it. And it has been a multitude of things, including extremely lonely sometimes. But each time where the loneliness set in, like I, the seasons where I felt the loneliness the most, psh, man, I just had to sip that shit. Like, what you gonna do? And then I just, more and more learned to enjoy my own company more and more learned like not learned because i already knew but like every time it was just a reminder that i'm in this bitch myself and essentially nobody owes me anything I heard that nobody owes me anything so Take care of myself and i have people that i love but it's not but it ain't their job to take care of me either um don't really ask for help much because ain't nobody got nothing for real we everybody struggling ain't nobody offering no help and i didn't expect them to i learned that from being young and i also learned that you don't give out nothing that um you can't get back because the heart of a giver, I remember being, what, 19, 20? Probably, when did I go to basic training? I went to basic training. Uh, so, yeah, I'll just say about 20, 2021. I remember having a con, being in, in a car, like sitting in my car, crying having a conversation with God and it was like I do not want this this is supposed to be a gift like loving and giving and being nice like I don't want to be a giver I do not want this gift I, I was like take it like this is too hard like I don't know I was like, I don't want to hate people, but people just don't take, take, take. Like, I don't want it. And it wasn't about being a giver. It was just about establishing my boundaries. Knowing that I didn't have to do anything. And I didn't necessarily know that I felt like I had to. It was like a compulsion. Like, 
I love you and I want to help. And that's all. That's what it was for me. Like, I love you and I want to make your life easier. So here, I have this, like, money wasn't a thing for me, especially then. Psh, then in 2000 and what, two, 2003? What? I worked at the one of the hottest nightclubs. One of the hottest nightclubs in the city. I think at the time it was one of the only black owned clubs. Like I know we had other clubs down there that like we used to, in the flats that we used to turn out. But like, if I recall correctly, the bottom line was like the only black owned nightclub. Like they were, the business owners were black. And that bitch was jumping all the time. We was making money. Plus, I was getting my money from, like, the military. Like, money wasn't an option. It wasn't a thing. I didn't understand the value. Like, nobody taught me how to save money or, like, I taught myself. I went. I told my, when I was working, I told my foster mom I wanted to open the bank account. I went and I opened the bank account. Like, she took me, but that was my bank account. Like, she drove me because I wasn't driving yet. But that was my account um savings account checking account but like nobody taught me money management nobody taught me financial literacy like i had to figure that shit out along the way i had my first apartment like i got promoted to my senior year in june which is my birthday i mean in may the end of may which is that my birthday is in june so i turned 18 i think i moved out into my first apartment like when i turned 18 i started finding apart looking for apartments um, because I was eligible to move out. And I know in a lot of places, if you're 18, your the, the, the parent can't, the foster parent has to release you in order to get another child income. Um, cause technically now you're an adult and it has to be a whole other process. I think for you to stay just like so and I wanted to move out anyway I was just ready to be on my own I was just ready like my foster mother's getting on my nerves probably I don't know I just was ready it was like I'm 18 I know I can have my own place okay fine like I wanted my own space and so I think July probably like the middle of July I moved into my apartment and then beginning of September we started school I started my senior year so my senior year, I was in my apartment and um, it was the, it was always people like, it was the spot to be. And I was always like a nerd. I was a, I was a nerd. I was like, I was just me. I was just me. I always had a book in my hand cause I love reading. Um, and I hung out with whoever I wanted to. And um, after school, I would go to work sometimes. like. Well, most of the time I would go to work because I know everybody tried to get me in something. Track and basketball especially. Like, you're going to play this, you're going to do that. And I'm like, now nah, I got to work. Got to work. Got to work. I can't sit around after school and play no sport. I can't. Like, I need money. I got to buy deodorant. I got to buy shoes. I got to buy, like, mm, I, I, <laughs> what? No, I can't do that. So... I worked all throughout high school, especially when I got my apartment. I got to work, like, mm. and that first year, like, the county paid my bills because they still technically, even though I was 18, I was in my senior year of high school, so they had to pay my bills. So, like, um, my money was mine for the most part, but then once again, ain't nobody come in and teach me, like, about paying bills and stuff, so... I can't remember if they would give me the check and I would pay them directly or they would pay them directly. I can't remember. It's been too long. But I do know that like I got somewhere where I would be able to afford after they because I knew after my senior year like they wasn't going to pay no more. after I, Like literally after I graduated, it was, a, it was a wrap. So I knew that I was going to have to be able to afford. I think they gave me like maybe a couple months, maybe, maybe two months after. But I knew that I was gonna have to um, pay my own rent, but it was my rent for my apartment was three fifty for the two bedroom, so that was cool. Um, and then after I graduated, 
before I left for for the military, I ended up moving. Um to another place and that place probably was it was like a up it was like a two-story house and i think it was another it was another two bedroom it was a two-story house like up and down um so we had we had people upstairs i think they was renting out the whole house so it was the first floor the second floor and the third the attic the third floor um they had turned it to a little apartment so we moved over there and I think that that was spot was like 350 even we were splitting it between the both of us and even when I went through went to basic training like I was still sending my I was still sending my portion and, and stuff back to the house so I'm trying to figure out like whatever um so my life journey has has been different than a lot of people around me and I didn't really know how to I mean when I was younger it just was what it was like I talked about what I talked about or whatever and then after I and at some point it became like I realized that like some people would be uncomfortable or judgy or whatever and it just made me uncomfortable to talk about my past so I kind of stopped um Especially sometime after the book, like, I think I just got exhausted. <laughs> I just got exhausted. I, I have been exhausted for a long time. And it doesn't even matter to anybody but me. And that's okay because that's kind of how it's been. And that's my perception of it. I used to be saying, like, I'm tired like I say stuff I always say how I feel and what's going on and nobody does anything and I don't even expect them to and I don't know how to really feel about that like my take on life is that I love people how I love them people are to me who they are to me and that's really all I can control whatever I see whatever happens like in this dynamic because like when you're in a relationship things are different so whatever I'm perceiving whatever I'm supposed to perceive in this relationship whatever I'm guided to do in this relationship like that's the only thing that I have control over because when I there was a point of time when I cared about like people liking me too, like keeping the people in my life that were in my life, like consciously, like very not, it was, it was different. Cause I always been used to leaving people. So maybe it was just the loyalty thing because I can't really recall ever having a thought. Like, I don't want you to leave out of my life. Like, bye. Like I'll be sad. But bye. But the people that I loved and I felt were valuable and special to me, like I held on to them a lot tighter. And it was just natural. Like, I didn't necessarily feel like I was fighting for them. It was just like they was able to get away with more shit because they were closer to my heart, right? I probably let more shit slide. And then I would let people go when they pushed past the boundary, when it felt like, when I felt like, you were trying to take advantage of me. And then that's one thing I had to learn when I was asking God to take my gift of like being a giver and being understanding and all of this stuff. Like it was like, it's not about anybody else. Like the only thing that is going to balance this is me balancing me. So I have to be okay with saying no. If I don't fucking feel like it, then I don't do it because guess what? Now I don't have any expectations for you to do anything. Like, if I think, like, oh, okay, you're going to, like, I, I did that. And even if it wasn't, like, I did this so you can do this. Some Sometimes there's still an underlying expectation that we have of people. And then that's when you start bringing up stuff. Like, 
Because one of my girls had to, had to tell me at the time, she was like, I don't like taking stuff from you because you bring it back up. And I was like, I do. Didn't even realize it. Didn't even know that I was uh, holding on to like what I did for somebody. And I was like, ooh, because I don't let nobody do that to me. And I was aware of it, so I stopped. Like, that was it. I was like, okay. And that was kind of like how I operated in spaces, period. Uh, once I became aware of a behavior that I did not like from others, and I realized, and somebody pointed out that I was doing it, or I realized that I was doing it, I stopped that shit immediately. And in that different things changed for me. Um, when I started letting people go, when I, cause it got to a point where I was just like, hey, I don't have to be your friend no more. I don't have to be your friend no more. Like, I have been a good friend. I know that. And however you see it is how you see it. But I know I've been a really good friend. And you are really shitty. And you trying to use me like. It was the entitled. It got to the I'm like. I'm not. I don't have to do stuff for you. Like. I do it because I, I love you. And I want to help you out. I see how you over here struggling. And I got a little bit and I can help. Like if I say that I love you. And I know, and you're, I hear you telling me that you're struggling, or I hear you saying stuff, and I know that I have access to help you. Why, why would I not want to help you as someone that loves you? Why would I not want to make your life a little better, a little easier, take a little weight off, right? So, like, when I be thinking about like where my money went, yeah, I was blowing it, but I'm like, I never had a, I never really had a shopping addiction. Never, I mean, clothes were clothes. I was used to getting clothing vouchers and shopping at TJ Maxx and stuff and having the income that I had as a young adult and even like and having other responsibilities I still only have so much money I'm not spending my money on shoes and clothes like that shit wasn't important to me like whatever clothes I got with my clothing voucher I kept them shits until I no longer wanted them I couldn't fit and I ain't I, I, I haven't fluctuated in size too much like my most of the time my clothes will still fit to the most part so like i would rock them shits out like i ain't care and a lot of stuff that was supposed to be fashionable like i ain't think that shit was fashion like it didn't matter to me and at the end of the day like this is how much money i have if i spend this much on that that leaves me with this much and like no so i didn't have like shopping addictions i did i ate out a lot like i love food and when given the chance, like, I'm going to spend money on food. <laughs> like, there is a time where I'm like, and that's still with a dream of mine. Like, to be able to get in a position to where I'm like, oh, I want some Indian food. I remember having that conversation with a couple of my girls at a point in time. Like, I'm going to be wealthy to the point where I'm going to be like, let's go. I want some Indian food. And I'm going to be able to fly to India for lunch, dinner, like for a couple days to satisfy my Indian taste. Like, that was like what I wanted to do. And, and as a as a young person, like especially getting money, that's what I spent my money on. Like food and the people around me. I was making sure everybody had something. If you went shopping with me, we was at the mall and I was getting stuff. I felt bad to not get you anything, to have you over here just and I know you like that skirt, and I know you can't afford it. Right? I know you like that, too. Like, I'm going to get you something, too. That was just the person that I was at that point in time. Because I understood that life as a foster kid. Like, being at the store with somebody or their family and not being able to get nothing because you ain't got no money. Thankfully, most of the time, I kept money because I kept I kept a hustle. I kept, I kept getting, like, as a... I, I made sure I had some type of money in my pocket. I might not have understood the value to that extent um but i understood it to some extent to have it right whatever that was and then i could maneuver as long as i had something i could maneuver around the rest um because as a foster kid you learn the system you learn the fucking system it's survival 
when you gotta survive, you gonna learn how to survive. Or what if you don't like your ass gonna be eaten, eaten alive. And I knew it was a couple things that I could not, I did not want to experience. It was a couple things I knew I didn't want to experience. That I had experienced enough in my in my childhood that I did not want to have to recover from. And I tried to be really um really careful with that. And at the end of the day, like at the end of each day, for the most part, I came home to myself and that showed me that I had myself to depend on at the end of the day like but that doesn't negate that I've had people that love me in my life and and things right like there are times where I was homeless and I stayed with friends like I need somewhere to stay and I had somewhere to lay my head it didn't have to be in my car i think i think i slept in my car once or contemplated it because of um not not wanting to infringe on nobody and i was like oh no mm -mm. and i asked so i don't ask for much it's not my i don't ask for much um because a lot of times the things that i a lot of times it don't, a lot of times the things that I need and want is going to come from me. Like, I ain't seen it come from many other places. So, not, <laughs> and I appreciate everything that everyone does for me because people don't have to do it. And also, I'll be like, the times where I needed a hug the most, I hugged myself. When I needed to cry, the couple times I have literally broken down and cried, like the tears that I probably needed to cry. <laughs> Often people couldn't handle it, like, I don't know. So I just learned to give people what they can handle of me, give people the versions that they can handle, give, you know, and hold the rest for myself because that's what society has, has taught me that, and that's, and I guess that's okay. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but most people can only hold and handle certain versions of you. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, I guess. It just is what it is. But um, 23 minutes. Um, I don't feel like I'm gonna have to edit this. I ain't editing shit. I'm gonna just say this real quick. But um, something that I was talking about last night and uh My friend, he was like, COVID fucked with everybody. And I was like, actually, it kind of didn't. I'm like, not necessarily. I was like, I heard people talk, like, I heard people talking about it. I was like, and I seen everything that was happening, but my life individually was not impacted by COVID. I said, didn't shit really change? I still went to work and I came home. I'm like, I still spent like 99% of my time alone. Like if I wasn't at work, I still was at home alone. Didn't shit shift for me? Like my life looked the same. And then I was like, and that made me wonder that made me wonder. I didn't never, never thought it was a bad thing. I'm like, it just guess my life is pandemic proof like okay but like when I was talking about it last night it made me also think about remind remi it reminded me of how I also thought about um or maybe that was just a thought last night 
of the being interested to see how other people that have been severely affected with trauma dealt with COVID. And I'm talking about as me as a veteran, like Nikki J as a black American woman that has grown up in the hood. Nikki J as the black American woman that grew up as a foster kid that experienced all type of abuse and pretty much was out here doing her thing, right? Nikki J as a teenager that was um, out here with the streets, like there's that. Um, Nikki J as the veteran. I wonder like people in these different spaces, how COVID affected them now. Like now I'm interested in talking to a couple other foster kids that I know to see how COVID affected them. And it might be different because as far as I know off the top of my head, I'm one of the only few that live alone and don't have any children. Well, that lived alone and, did, and don't have any children. And, um, yeah, so maybe I'm pretty sure that created a different dynamic as well. So it's just interesting. Um, and a part of me feels like that's sad for somebody. Like, there's a there is something that makes me want to cry. Like, I feel like there's an ancestor right here that's, like, mourning when I speak that. Like, they are sad. Like, I'm feeling the energy of something that is sad every time I say that. And I don't really understand why. And I don't even know if that's, like, even more sad that... I don't understand why it's so sad that the pandemic didn't being COVID being locked down or whatever didn't really affect me. And I still maneuvered how I always maneuvered. Like I like I've still gotta take make sure I'm taken care of. Like what the hell? So I don't know. And then later on I was mad because I was like, all that fucking money they, they was giving out, I probably should have come up should have not worked. I probably would have got way more money not working and having them pay. But when my home care clients um decided that they would take care of their parents because they jobs let them go, I was like, okay, and I was just driving Amazon when my um when it felt like, when I didn't want to drive Amazon, it was like, all right, like, and then I had, a, I've had, I got another job, like, my gym club, the gym that I was working at closed down because of COVID, like, I just got, an, I was offered another job through another fitness um, program, so it didn't, it just, it just was like another day in the office every day in my world, and that's kind of like every day, like. I don't know how nobody else life be looking. And it's it's okay. Like, it's life. It's just my life. Do I want something different? Absolutely. That's the one thing that has kept me going. Do I have times where I just feel like... All of these years, I have been running off of hope and trust and belief. Like, and knowing and believing in everything that I've been shown and told. Like there's a belief that I can't hold all of this and this be as far as I get. Like my spiritual team, the divine, the universe has not, God has not shown me all the things that I've been shown for it not to be something that I could have. Even if everything that I thought it was fucking blew up in my face, right? Like, even if everything that I thought it was, even if it broke me, even if it hurt me, even if it didn't work out, even if, like, no matter what, 
no matter what drained me, no matter what disappointed me, no matter what almost felt like it killed me, no matter the hurt, no matter the rejection, like, no matter the dismiss, like, no matter what came at me, no matter what I went through, no matter what I had to experience, like, fucking getting back up. Okay. Let me, let me breathe. Let me, you can't have no fucking meltdown. Oh, you feeling like you about to have a nervous breakdown, girl? You can't do that. What the fuck is going to happen? Like, where you going to go? What you going to do? Who going to take care of you? Who going to look out for you? Nah, nah, nah. Can't do that. Get, get it together. Get it together. Okay. All right. All right. So we can't go that far. We can't go. Di we can't dig that deep. We can't go that far. So this is our limit. Got it. This is the this is the limit. And then we got to do something else. Like, okay, fine. Oh, it's another season. Ain't nobody can't. Ain't nobody spending time with you. Ain't nobody calling. Ain't nobody by yourself. Ain't nobody answering their phone. Ain't nobody. Okay. All right. It's been. Whew. All right. Some seasons was so much harder to just take being alone. Cause sometimes that shit felt like it just never, it just never ended. And some, and then at some point that shit just became a breeze. Like I look up and it's been like, Oh, it's been a year. Like, damn. And sometimes I forget how long I've been sitting in silence and sitting by myself for real. Like I don't be knowing the time. I'll be like, I don't think it's been like 10 months since I talked to somebody or really been around people or I'm like I think I talked to such and such a couple times and I talked to okay like I guess every man nobody got no energy these days and that's cool like oh, okay and then there are seasons where I seem to socialize a lot and so um there are moments where I was just like and I said it, I've, I've told people this, how I felt, like, I've said it to people close to me. I probably, I'm not going to commit suicide. I don't think that I have that, whatever that is, whatever that strength, whatever that is, I don't think I have it. Um... I also completely understand why people do it. I sat in this, I sat in this house by myself for month after month after month after month after month after month, calling people sometimes, asking people. Like at this point, I probably wasn't even calling anybody. I had got to a place where I was like, I am tired of always being the person to initiate contact. And oftentimes, way too many times, I get rejected. And it's, well, I'm tired or I don't, a phone isn't answered or whatever the it is. And I just accept it because, like, everybody got their own shit, right? That's what it is. And there was times where it was just like, this is too much to sit in all of this space to feel all of this and to know that if this is as good as it gets, you can fucking take me now. Like, I don't want it. I don't want to be here and don't send me back to this and whatever. And I remember when I was gone, I called my aunt and I was like, hey, if something happened to me, um, with the money, with the insurance or whatever like I don't want a funeral because what the what why we having a funeral I'm alive and niggas don't really reach out to me here like hell fucking odd like so y'all can cry and together and kumbaya together and like what is that for I don't want that shit I don't want it and then, I, and then I started feeling bad because I'm like, I know funerals and stuff are usually meant for the people alive to do whatever. I'll be dead. It don't matter. But I'm getting like, what are we doing? What, why? Why? What, who? 
who y'all perform like who is the performance for oh now because i'm dead nobody fucking know like now everybody's sad nah 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 i said it and i meant it and then um and then i was like well i'll be dead so i guess y'all can do whatever y'all want like <laughs> Guess y'all can do whatever y'all want to do with whatever money. And um, Oh shit. Oh my bad. Um, but yeah, so there were many times where I was in this house and I was just like Oh, this is why people commit suicide. Because there they don't see any way out of this. Who's giving up hope? If you don't, if you don't believe that you have something else to live for, and for so long, it's just, it's just this, like, and that's why I knew mindset was important, because I could either see everything as a failure, or see everything as a, as a lesson, or a way to get better, or just see everything as it, as I saw it, and just take one step at a time not try to figure shit out um I, I don't actively try to figure shit out because not like that i'm very uh i'm very intelligent and per and uh per what's the word i'm looking for y'all know perceptive thank you um very perceptive but like actively trying to figure out, actively trying to find out if somebody doing wrong to me or actively trying to find out other people's business and shit like that. I don't do none of that. I don't care about that shit. One thing you might learn is that when you spend so much time alone it's and, and just in meditation and contemplating and always trying to better yourself because that's the only thing I do. Everything that happens I kind of turn to myself I look at myself I'll be like okay what what can I learn what can I do what what was that supposed to teach me what what happened where oh okay because that's all you can do figure out how you can get better figure out the lessons that you're supposed to learn introspective all the time so you realize that like most of the shit don't matter I don't care about most of this shit. And living, living with um, limited means of, limited financial means, for me, it was always like, okay, how will that benefit me? That's not gonna benefit me. So my, my at this point, my one addiction is food. Um. And that looks different because, like, a lot of the food here sucks. I don't, like, I got this much money and I decided to treat myself out. I used to treat myself out to eat all the time. And then these restaurants started being, sh like, I ain't spending my fucking money on this. Now I'm mad. So many times I was going to these damn restaurants pissed off. Pissed off. I can do this at home. Like, shit, I know how to make what I know how to cook for me. Cause I hate when some if people ask me if I know how to cook. Like, dudes ask me if I know how to cook. The fuck? Don't ask me if I know how to cook. No, I don't know. Like, because that's such a relative question to me. Do you know how to cook? For me, like, I like my food. I eat it. I don't know if you will. We might not have the same taste buds. Like, it depends on what you like. A lot of times people don't like what I like. I eat shit. Most of my stuff is plant-based. I eat fish occasionally. I have I eat fish. I will eat fish, but I like I love spice. I love spices. I like to try stuff. Like, oh, I love spices. I love spicy. 
I love trying new cuisines. I like um, shit. I might do some other seafood. I used to do crab. I don't really like shrimp. I don't, I don't like shrimp. Um, but I probably will do. I do crab. I'll do crab cakes. Um, probably ain't busting up no crab leg. I don't know. Maybe it's been a while, but I'll do seafood. Um. I said that I would probably do lamb. I had some lamb before it was good, but then, mm -mm. I don't know. Um, but I seafood, like I mean, uh, plant based is is pretty much it. And I and I I cook. I, I cook at home. I like to I like to be in the kitchen. I love creating. I love. I love creating my own dishes. I love playing around in the kitchen. I love, especially because I know what's in it. Like, I'm an extremely picky eater. Um, I'm really particular about what I put in my body. Let's just say that. So I make my own spices. Like, I I started making my own spices. I know, to, like, I, I, I enjoy being in the kitchen. Um, and I still want a chef. Anything that I get to my family, I want it to be out of love. Like, somebody cooking in my kitchen, being angry and feeding that shit to my family. Hell no, or myself. Um, yeah, anywho, I just went on a tangent, but. Another 40 minute video. <sighs>